This is a quick video on how to measure approximate displacement in a Chinese clone chainsaw. These are Zenoa clones. They come in generally four sizes, 45cc, 52cc, 58, and 62. Now, to measure these, you, it's really tough to get exact measurements unless you completely tear them down. What you're looking at is simply a two millimeter difference in most of the size groups. And two millimeters isn't a lot. I mean, if we uh, compare it, it's a roughly uh, the thickness of a nickel. That's 1.87 uh, to the coin edge. So that's what we're looking at is roughly two millimeters. And the first thing you want to start with on these saws, uh, regardless of what they say in the box, because they're, they're notorious for misrepresenting these saws. If you buy an $80 saw, you probably have some type of a material misrepresentation as to size. Uh, the $130 saws, they're not quite so bad. Price really makes a difference in these as to quality. So let's take a look first. Uh, first of all, the um, stroke is going to be one of two. It's going to be a 32 or a 34. The 32 equates to 45 cc and 52 cc, also called model 4500, 5200. And then if you get a 34 millimeter, it's probably a 58 or 62 cc called model 5800 or 6200. The saw I have right in front of us is a, uh, was marked as a 58 cc. And finding displacement is really fairly easy. Uh, you, you take a stick, you want a pointed end on that stick, and you, you put it in, and it's going to be at a slight angle, and you simply move up and down until you can mark your points of reference. And what I do is I simply wiggle it back and forth to get a little bit of dirt on it, trying to keep the same angle, then I mark my spot on it with a knife, because you don't, you know, the thickness of a piece of uh, a pencil line is almost a half a millimeter, so you want to mark it as, as fine as you can. Then you move it up to the top and uh, do it again and then measure the distance on the stick of the two spots. You can get a fairly good approximate measurement by doing that. You have to fiddle around a while till you get it done. And of course you would want to use a very good caliper like a digital caliper that I'm using here. Now I measured this and uh, this one came out to 30 2.64, so I'm much closer to 32 millimeters than to 34 millimeters. And so then, while I, I'm not exactly on, I am in the range of a 45 to a 52 cc. So already the 58 cc designation doesn't make any sense. So the next, next thing you want to do is you want to try to find the cylinder size, and that's, that's just as difficult. Uh, you have to turn around and go after, remove the, uh, remove the muffler, and then you can get at the cylinder. And when you get into the cylinder, and that's, that's not easy to see in there. I'm going to put a light on it so you can see it. That cylinder is domed. And uh, you can see the cylinder, and you might be able to see the dome in it uh, ever so slightly. But when you, when you try to go after that, you do the same procedure with a stick. You want your stick to be a pointed edge. And because that's domed, uh, if you put it in flat like this, you're going to bend that stick and you're going to screw up your measurement. So I do the stick up and down like that so I'm hitting on an edge and I try to catch that edge. As I do that, before I do that, I take a uh, pencil lead and I touch up the very top rim of the inside of that cylinder so I can get just a little graphite on it. So the graphite will move to the top of this piece of wood and that way I can, I can see a little better. And then when I do it, I measure on the inside. On this one, when I did the measurement, I ended up right at a little over, uh, a little over uh, 44.8. And now here's the measurements you're going to be looking for. On a 45 cc, you're going to be a clear 43 millimeters. So I'm quite above a 45, getting up there to that 44.8. Uh, the 52 cc is generally about 44.9. So you know I'm right on 52, give or take a little bit. But even if I go up a half, I'm already in the 58 cc range. So you know you really got a question here whether you have a 52 or a 58 based upon size. Uh, however, because the stroke is clearly at the lower end, it's, it's a 52cc. 
and the 62cc 47.5 some people call it a 48 if you go look for parts you'll be looking for a 48 millimeter uh, piston uh, and so you're there you are uh, probably at a 52cc now there's several other things you can look at to determine what the size is on the saw you're buying uh, this is the air filter that came off this this is an air filter that is generally put on a 52 or a 45 cc Zenoa clone. It's a small air filter. The other air filters are probably just about double the size of this, so it's real easy to tell a large from a small air filter. That, as a general rule, means you have a 52 cc or lower. And if you have the large air filter, you'll have a 58 or 62. The rule doesn't always apply. There's, I saw a model of Zenoa clones out there that has the large air filter and their 52 cc. They're all black in color. So everything in the world is out there. These Zenoa clones are marketed under dozens of different names and the names keep changing. So you, you never really know a, a name brand that you can kind of select except when you go up to the $130 price range for the exact same saw but with better quality parts. Uh, the one I like to, that I've gotten is called a Couture, C-O-O-C-H-E-E-R. And, and those seem to have a little better quality, well, quite a bit better quality parts than these others. But overall, you know, if you, if you buy one of these, you can't really trust the labeling. You'll, if they say 52 or 58, it could be 45. It could be 52, it could be 58. Uh, you really don't know what you're getting. And it probably doesn't matter a lot. I mean, it's more for your own curiosity to find out what you really got on one of these because they all come with the exact same carburetor. And with the same carburetor, you're limiting yourself on how much power you're going to get. So going from 45 to 62 probably doesn't give you a whole lot. Uh, it's nice to know you got what you, what you bought. And of course, I mentioned the price range. If you're buying the ones that are in the $80 range, and there's a bunch of them out there on eBay, uh, you're going to find a saw that probably has more defective parts and is probably more likely to be mislabeled. And more, more than like, more probably, it probably is mislabeled if it's an $80 saw. That's what my experience is. And if you're buying the ones that generally sell for about the $130 range, uh, you're probably going to get something that has better quality parts and is more likely to be accurately labeled. Uh, and that, that's, that's kind of what I want to tell you. I want to put this back up again so you can get these, these sizes. Uh, and I, I just corresponded with a guy that had a 50, it's, it was marked as 54cc, which there isn't any in these particular models, but uh, it had a 43 millimeter uh, piston in it and a 32 millimeter stroke. So it clearly was not a 54, 58, or even a 52. It was a, probably a 45 cc saw. Didn't really make a lot of difference because uh, it has the same carb. So when you put that muffler back on, tighten those bolts up. Please like and subscribe. There is a Facebook group, uh, the Generic Chinese Chainsaw Forum, uh, Chinese Chainsaw Clone Forum, and I'll put that down in the more section. Uh, if you want more information, these are great saws. I'm not being disrespectful just because they're, they're the fraudulent labeling of them. They actually, the motors are great. The parts attached to them often are bad and the cheaper ones are but better in the, in the better quality. Uh, I have three and I work them mercilessly cutting cedar trees and pastures. Um, and so I love them. Try one out. It's not that much money. You're going to go broke on it. The people that, that use them have, um, I really appreciate what they are. Best of luck. Please like and subscribe.